The king is dead. Alexander Alekine, the fourth world chess champion, is found dead in his hotel room in Estoril, Portugal. The chess crown being vacant, FIDE, the International Chess Federation, steps in. In 1948, FIDE starts a special tournament to decide who will be the next world chess champion. That champion will find out that it's hard to get to the top, but harder to stay there. After World War II, FIDE was left to pick up the pieces of the World Chess Championship and its organization. Many of FIDE's member countries, not paying their membership dues, exacerbated the situation. However, FIDE managed to rebuild and in 1946 had one of many congresses to find a solution to the vacant crown. A few proposals were submitted in regards as to who would be world champion. Two of which were that since Alexander Alekhine decided to play Mikhail Botvinnik, that he should get the title. The other was that the last remaining world champion alive, Max Uva, should win. A story regarding this is that before the Soviet delegation joined to decide the World Chess Championship, that Max Uva was awarded the crown. However, the Soviets arrived the next day and decided upon a solution to the title. So Uva was champion for one day in 1947. A solution was reached by the FIDE members to host a tournament of the top candidate players. The candidate players were Max Uva, Mikhail Botvinnik, Paul Karas, Samuel Reshevsky, and Vasily Smyslov. They also laid out the groundwork for the future challengers to the World Chess Championship. In this three-year cycle, countries affiliated with FIDE would send players to zonal tournaments, and the winners of those would move to the interzonal tournaments. The winners of those would move on to the candidates tournament, the winner of which would challenge for the World Chess Championship. So the scene was set for the 1948 World Chess Championship. The outbreak of World War II prevented Mikhail Botvinnik from playing for the World Championship against Alexander Alekhine in 1938. Born in 1911, Botvinnik was a Soviet chess champion, electrical engineer, and computer scientist. In 1941, Nazi Germany invaded the Soviet Union. His wife, a ballerina, told him that her work colleagues were being evacuated to Perm. The family found an apartment there, and Botvinnik found a job at an electrical supply organization at the lowest pay rate. In his spare time, he wrote a book in which he annotated all of the games of the absolute championships of the USSR to keep sharp horse match against Alekhine. In 1944 and 45, Bafanik won the Soviet Chess Championship, which led to open talks with England's Chess Federation to host the World Championship match. However, Alekhine's death in 1946 would end that. The Soviet proposal to FIDE in the 1948 World Chess Championship was authored by Botvinnik, who strongly influenced the outcome of all future World Chess Championship competitions. After Alekhine's death, the new world champion was decided in the candidate tournament played in Moscow in 1948. One of the most important games of, of this tournament was played between uh, Vasily Smyslov and Mikhail Bogbini. Uh, in this game, uh, Smyslov played with E4, uh, this opening uh, suggests that White is in aggressive mode, looking for the point. And uh, Bogbini also plays C5, uh, looking for an unbalanced game, accepting the challenge. Uh, instead, play something symmetrical. So, knight f3, knight c6, open system. And here, Black select the move knight f6, that this leads to the uh, classical Sicilian defense. Uh, still, Black have some chance to transport to select other other alternative after knight c3 d6 classical Sicilian defense. Here Black can go for the Pelican as well. Okay, uh, and and here in some case probably g6 may be considered, but Black have to be careful with the capture and the pawn advance to e5. So well d6 classical Sicilian. Now bishop g5. This is known as the Richard Rouser variation. The main idea of the move is. Uh, try to create a structural damage, trading the bishop for the for the knight, and also uh, enabling uh, 
this diagonal for the queen looking for opposite castle situation. So e6 is a standard re uh, reply in order to be able to recapture with the queen, preventing the damage in the structure. And here we are going to see the first su surprise of the game, bishop e2. This is a a sideline, you know, a very modest variant that, objectively speaking, don't lead to a sharp game uh, because if, if White wants to play uh, in, in the aggressive style, he should continue with queen d2, looking for the long castle. And the, the, the main theory of this variant is a6, to cover b5 square to prevent the pressure in the future backward pawn. Um, after the long castle, bishop d7, bishop takes, pawn takes. Um, basically, black play with the with the bishop pair, but with a more restricted pawn structure. One of the main plans in this kind of positions is play f4, f5, trying to provoke the pawn advance to be able to use the outputs on d5. For sure, black will not push the pawn because it's very important to keep the control of these two squares to prevent the creation of the outputs on d5 and f5. So let's go back, bishop e2, bishop e7, short castle, short castle. Okay, now, uh, why is trying to put some pressure here? Uh, Really, this move in a first glance looks like a ceiling move because after a6, uh, seems to be like why have to retreat the knight. But here uh, we are going to see the idea. Bishop takes on f6, creating the damage in the structure because if black captured with the bishop, the pawn on d6 falls. So, uh, but meaning recapture with the pawn to kick the defense on the backward pawn. But here, the capture with the bishop will be a very interesting alternative. And after knight takes, queen c7, takes, takes, and Black have a good uh, dynamic compensation for the pawn sacrifice because we have a opposite color bishop situation with queens on the board and the expansion on the queens is incoming with some pressure in the long diagonal. Also, the, la the white last score bishop potentially can be blocked by the central pawn and uh, black have a lot of uh, dynamics of, on the position. But uh, those kind of variants are very complex uh, to select because uh, if you don't justify the pound of this advantage, eventually why can consolidate? But will be a very interesting alternative. So, in the game of Vinic, took with the pound, opening the G file, um, and he's going to try to create an attack on the king side. So, knight d4, king to the corner. Okay, king to the corner as well, anticipating the location of the rook on GA. And here, f4. This is uh, one of the Thematic plans is push the pawn to f5 to try to provoke the advance in order to get the output for the knight. So bishop b7, bishop f3, rook to the open file, and after the capture, black recapture with the b pawn in order to have the pawn to square away, also to reinforce uh, the control on the d5 square to prevent the creation of the outputs there. So knight e2, okay, as usual, white star and i maneuver. Uh, to improve the location of the knight that was being controlled by the pawn on c6, and here black push to d5, claiming some central control and also placing the pawns in the same color of the enemy bishop. So f5, uh, white is trying to undermine a uh, black pawn structure, uh, queen c7, keeping the tension, and here uh, we have again c4. Uh, uh, again, the same idea, I mean, try to uh, remove those black central pawns. This way to play looks a bit ugly because why seems to be like why is play placing all the pawns in the same color of the bishop. But and also it's a bit contradictory because uh, why is trying to open the position without the bishop pair. And uh, Bogbini uh, take advantage of this trading pawns, opening new lines so without being worried about the, the temporal damage in the stroke uh, due to the separation of the island of pawns. So now c5. Queen takes and uh, bishop d6, uh, creating a battery over the pawn on h2. d3, bishop b5, queen c2, and pawn takes. So with the bishop pair, a rule of thumb is just trade pounds to enable new diagonals. This is a bit controversial because also when white recapture, white is removing the central pawn to activate his bishop as well, but now there is a lot of tactical things uh, in relation with this diagonal. So rook to the open file. And now black finally take the invasion square with some threats like rook takes on f3, followed by bishop c6, uh, removing the controller of the line squares. So in this position, Smyslov uh, removed the target. And now after queen e7, uh, black continue increasing the pressure on, on the knight. So uh, knight g1, bishop d3, and c4. Uh, with this pawn advance, 
Black create this strong output that control a lot of sports in enemy territory. This bishop on d3 is very annoying. And, and, and a natural reaction in this kind of position is try to get rid of the output. Uh, in this case, probably the unique way to do that uh, for why would be trying to undermine the base of the output. But we are going to see uh, in the future that really this is going to be the final blunder of the game. Okay, rook f3, looking for some trades and black reinforce. Rook d1, okay, and now bishop c5, setting a trap and white falls in that after b3. Uh, Smith's love basically overlooked that when black gets the invitation score in the first rank, is creating a deadly pin here uh, because black can capture on g1, not with the rook, with the bishop for sure. Okay, and after this, basically, it's an extra piece, so start the technical phase of the game. Takes, takes, bishop f1. Uh, black just simplify and uh, we group the pieces just to consolidate. Now we have a pin uh, in the diagonal, uh, winning the change. Okay, so bishop d4, tricky move. Queen e3, taking advantage of the pin. Takes, takes. Okay, and, and this is, yeah, kind of eternal pin. So bishop g2, bishop takes, takes. Invasion square and uh, the pounds are going to fall. And this is a pass pound that is going to promote. Um, yeah, after king g2, uh, why simple reason? 